2,250 points of corn demons. This massive army has been painted by Mark, one of the artists here at Siege, and comprises of 60 blood letters, six skull crushers, 10 flesh hounds, three skull cannons, a skull taker, a skull master herald on juggernaut, a Karanak, a bloodthirster, and Scarbrand. So let's start by looking at probably one of the most iconic corn demon models, the Bloodthirster. Our client has elected to have this Bloodthirster painted in a different kind of color scheme for their army. Rather than having red flesh, they've had a black kind of skin tone on the demon or the hide, uh, and it's all been highlighted with reds just to keep that sort of reddish hue across the miniature. Uh, one of the things I absolutely love with it is just the amount of gold work that this guy has also got. Loads of sigils, corn symbols, absolutely everything that you could imagine on a corn demon, all the chains and all the different details has got a really nice kind of glint to it with some silvers and also golds. Mark's done a great job of highlighting all the muscular structure and sort of uh, scarred sort of marks that are on the skin with that red uh, various stages just to add interest to those. But all the bone work, we've got these lovely transitions just on the horns here where they go from a lighter colour at, at the base all the way through to a darker colour at the end. You've got that lovely sort of grizzled face as well with all the details fully painted on there. Nice smooth transitions on some of the skin tone areas on that face uh, just to define the facial details. Um, as we move around, we've got these beautiful wings here with this rouge or red kind of hue to them. Now, whether that's blood flowing through the wings or it is a reddish kind of like stain from all the blood that this bloodthirster has spilt, um, a really, really nice execution across there with all the highlighting across the stretch kind of sinew in between the wings. And you've got the, this sort of black red spars of, of bone that go in between the, uh, the, the sort of wings, which is just nice. Uh, little thing that I actually learned looking at this model, on the bottom of the Bloodthirster's feet, you actually have corn symbols as well on the bottom of his feet. So wherever he treads, he leaves Corn's mark, which I think is absolutely awesome. Uh, Mark's done a great job, again, on the armor panelling on this as well. You've got some really refined, sharp red areas of armor panelling on the miniature as well, which is just great. Uh, and that gold and red, it's a classic combo of colors, which just works really nicely and adds a bit of a kind of like royal or kind of commanding kind of feel to the miniature. Uh, finished off with a lava sort of Armageddon base, hell world base here, as you can see. Uh, all that lava kind of like stretched out across it, which is just great. We've got the flames that obviously he's leaping from and that pile of skulls that's just at the bottom of the base, uh, which is very fitting and in keeping with a corn demon model. So next, let's have a look at one of the three skull cannons that are in this army. In keeping with the black skin of that bloodthirster, the skull cannons, the armoured areas are done in a black metal or black kind of colour as well, which is quite cool. And then it really helps just contrast all the filigree or the coordinate sigils and filigree that are across the sort of surface of the cannon. Got this bone sticking out the front here. Uh, as you can see, obviously, just lots of sort of colour transition on there, just from subtlety at the root all the way through to a brighter tip at the end, uh, ready to spear someone or empower someone. All the metal work marks done a great job of just highlighting it all with sharp highlighting across every aspect of the metal on the miniature. We've also got some flesh here at the front with like loads of skulls and faces and things that are just obviously just all like built into that area. A nice grisly kind of rack of trophies that this skull cannon has collected in the name of corn. We have the two blood letter riders just on top of the uh, sort of crew plate or tread plate area at the top. Again, that's another symbol of corn. Uh, this thing is an effigy to corn with the amount of symbols and things that it has on it. Um, held on obviously by these chains here, as you can see, uh, these two blood letters just uh, riding forward on the cannon as it goes forward. And again, you can see this lovely lava base that's consistent across the force, just a real high contrast base to the black armored areas of the skull cannon. Uh, but this is one of three in the army. So following on from the skull cannon, let's have a look at one of the six blood crushers from the army. Here we've got the champion of the unit defined by the extra bits of detail work and filigree that's on the model, plus also the uh, golden horns that this chap has got in a really aggressive, commanding, dominant pose here on that Juggernaut. Juggernauts are probably one of the most iconic corn demon models, in my opinion. Um, right from back in the day, we had Marines riding them. Uh, just such an awesome kit with loads of detail and loads of spiky bits, as you'd expect with a corn or chaos miniature. Um, again, really nice color contrast there between the black and gold armored juggernaut to the red sort of deep crimson blood letter that's just on the top. And it really helps with the gold just to punch through having those slightly darker tones just on the actual main body of the juggernaut, plus also all the trim and stuff being done in gold. Um, really great high contrast base, as I said, with the lava world basing, which just fits really in keeping with the actual faction and the range. Um, and I do really like that Mark has done a lot of subtle highlighting work across all of the sort of sinew and skin on the blood letters, picking out all the little bobbles um, on the back of the hide, as you can see, 
um, and also just defining those little sort of details just across the face in facial areas like the tongue with that lovely color just obviously just coming out the tongue as well which is nice uh, so that's the champion of the blood crushers so following on from the blood crushers let's have a look at karanak the hound of vengeance this fantastic miniature is the chief hound amongst this army and you can see obviously with that tri-headed super aggressive visage that it's got mark has done a tremendous job across all the areas of detail on this miniature you've got everything from gold work to flesh to sort of more hide uh, we've got some really great uh, color relationships on here with the purple harmonious color to the red the dark black areas that are on the more sort of crusty kind of armored parts of the miniature and some hair one of the things I do absolutely love is this soft underbelly on the model. I think it's great that Mark's used some much more sort of lighter tones just to define that sort of softer area of flesh that's just on the underside. It almost makes it look like the top half or, or sort of sides and top are more armoured or tougher. And then you've got this much, uh, much sort of lighter, softer underbelly that's just on the inside here, which I really, really like on the miniature. Um, we've got these three heads, as I mentioned. You've got the couple with collars on there with that splash of gold, which is really nice. And then we've got this kind of like triceratops dinosaur sort of quiff thing that the middle one's got, which is quite interesting. Um, again, just howling away there, that third head. Um, and I do really like the use of black, as I mentioned, on some of the main details, like the horns and crests and hair. It really just adds a bit of like an evilness to the miniature, which I think is just great. So next, let's have a look at the flesh hounds from the army. So these are the hounds which Karanak commands, and you can see that Mark's done a great thing here with using purple on that massive sort of crest of hair on the back of them. Really defines them, and it really balances nicely with the red tones that are on the base in the lava, which I think is absolutely great. We've got a much deeper crimson skin tone on these, which is just really interesting. Um, makes them look a lot more menacing, I feel, as well. And you can see these big crests that we've got around the head, followed with the gold collar, that purple and gold sort of uh, colorway just works really nicely. Um, you'll see we've got this burning kind of like heat or lava effect on these marks on the skin here, which tie in really nicely to the, the basing details with that lava base. Um, and one of the things I do really like talking about the basing is, yes, we have got a lot of kind of like brighter yellows, oranges and reds on that lava world basing. But we've also got a nice scattering of much more neutral tones with the greys and things that have been done on that sort of surface material um, and also balanced out by the kind of like skull colour or the ivory that's been used on the skulls on the bases as well. Uh, but just a fantastic miniature. And next up, let's have a look at the main bulk of this demon army with the 60 blood letters. Let's pull forward some to have a look at. So first we have a champion here, denoted again by those golden crests on his horns. Uh, as you can see, you've got that lovely demon blade there with that exterior glow effect that Mark has done across all the blades on this force, on every single blade on the army, which just looks really great. Um, I love the leering haunched pose of this champion as if it's gonna come and get you, which is just absolutely awesome. Uh, one of the things that really works on the miniature is the purple on the tongues of the blood letters. Again, it's a harmonious color, which just works really nicely with the red tones across the miniature. Uh, I think that the balance of the uh, use of red on the model is quite nice as well. Often if the, if the red isn't broken up enough by shading or by sort of use of black or other tones, uh, they can look a bit too red. Uh, which is something I never thought I'd say, but um, really nicely done on this miniature. Um, the flesh is just done perfectly with nice subtle highlighting on all the different crest details and muscular structure of the blood letter, and that is the champion. One of the many free-handed banners and banner bearers in this force, we have this blood letter here with the cornate symbol just on a black background, uh, super high contrast, Really nicely executed there by Mark. You can see that really sharp, refined corn symbol just uh, on that uh, on that banner, which is great. Um, and as we move around, you can see the same attention and care done just on all the flesh work of the blood letter that's carrying it. We also have those lovely swords here with just different colors and tones on there, just to show the demonic energy flowing through those blades. Uh, again, really, really nicely executed. And another miniature, which is quite a few of in this force, is a musician. You've got a blood letter here with a horn. So this guy is obviously a horn blower. Um, you can see that lovely rich gold that's used on that musical instrument. Uh, one of the things that I do like, the attention that's been done that Mark has put, is he's actually even drilled the hole that the blood letter blows into on that, uh, on that horn, which is just great. Again, that care and attention just show the function is actually really important. Um, I do love the use of gold, as I mentioned, across the force. I think it makes them look really regal, which is great. Uh, but again, another really insidious blood letter from the army. So following on from the horde of blood letters, we have the Skullmaster Herald on Juggernaut. Let's have a look at him in more detail. So this is actually a metal model. It's really nice to hold and feel and see in the studio. Uh, obviously from my youth metal models, we've got this Skullmaster Herald here on Juggernaut. 
Uh, a great miniature. I really do like the use of the red, um, the red and black split on the juggernaut. I think it just really helps show kind of like seniority perhaps in the army, uh, along with all the gold details just on the horns, just to show that rank of this character. Uh, very aggressive pose, just charging forward there, held on by one hand, which I think is great. Um, I do like the use of some of the bone details just on these extra little horns that are on the back here, which is quite nice. Um, and as we move it around, you'll see obviously just that leering kind of pose. I love the use of red on the eye of the Juggernaut as well. I think that's quite a cool little detail just to show that evil energy just flying through that demon. Uh, but that is this awesome Skullmaster Herald. So following on from the Skullmaster Herald, let's have a look at the Skull Taker. This guy has collected and is carrying so many skulls that Corn is even jealous. Uh, as you can see here by the cape that is absolutely covered in human skulls. Uh, really awesome detail. That must, thing must weigh an absolute tonne. Uh, as we move around, he's got some flames spouting from one hand with some blood dripping out of them, which is just awesome. And then we've got this massive sword that he's carrying there. Really huge blade, that demonic blade, which is just great. Um, I do really love the use of the skulls just in the headdress as well. It's almost like he's got two little friends just watching everything that he does. Um, and again, you've got this really cool base, which I think is just great. Mark's done a great job of marrying that to the rest of the force by in between all the gaps, uh, he's adding that kind of like lava kind of fire feel on there, which is, which is awesome. Uh, just all those skulls just erupting from the ground, which is just brilliant. Um, one of the things that I absolutely love about this is just the, uh, the amount of gold work on him as well, just to really show that kind of rank and uh, kind of leadership position that he's got. Um, and you can see obviously on the chest there, you've got a huge skull, uh, which is just massive. And then you've obviously got some extra little details just dangling down some sort of ornate detail work just in the bottom from that sort of chest plate, uh, which is just great. But that's this awesome skull taker, one of the characters from the army. And finally, but by no means least, we have one of the main characters from this army. We have Scarbrand, a great demon bloodletter to lead this army with these tattered wings, as you can see there. Uh, great model that Mark has spent absolutely hours on painting to this super high quality. One of the things which I absolutely love that doesn't often get seen or discussed or talked about is the little eyes that are actually embedded in the blade. So the axe uh, having like its own life or personality is just something really interesting. And Mark's done a phenomenal job of just painting those eyes, doing the catch lights, all the little things in those eyes to make them look realistic and if they're actually looking out from the blade. Obviously, he's got a really rich crimson skin tone that Mark has spent ages on. Uh, doing all the subtle soft shading and deep shading, plus all the highlight stages across the sinew, the scars and marks across the flesh of Scarbrand. Um, I really like the uh, the black band braces to break up some of the model as well. So you've got areas of black armor, which are just done really nicely, again with gold trim. And obviously he has a lot of gold on him to denote the absolute seniority that he has on this force. Uh, I love the way that Mark has incorporated the, uh, the sort of basing detail that comes with the inherent kit and also creating this lava field around him as well as if he's stepping across there not to get his feet burnt, which is quite cool. Um, and as you'll see, there's a lot of extra little details on his face as well, which I really like. You can see the skull that's kind of showing there as well. So you've got that half flesh, half skull face that Scarbrand has, uh, that really vibrant, bright bone color that's been used on all the skulls and details across the miniature, just to contrast really nicely against the rich, warm red that's been used on there. Uh, a phenomenal model, a great centerpiece character, and just something to really command this force to victory. That's Scarbrand. So there we have it. Scarbrand joins the rest of this 2,250 point Corn Demons army. Now, if you like this army and would like to see more, head over to our YouTube channel and subscribe while you're there as we have lots of army videos on there and upload videos every week. If you'd like to get a commission with us fit for a character or a vast army like this, then please do not hesitate in going to the description of this video where you can find the LinkedIn Siege website to get a quote from us. From all the team here at Siege and myself, a massive thank you for watching the video. I will see you on the next one. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne.